This video is brought to you by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Carmine here, and welcome back to another What You're Missing video, and this time we'll be focusing on episode 3, The Long Night. Those of you who are new here, this is a video of things I happened to notice in the episode that some of you guys might have missed, and quite frankly, with how dark it was, I'm sure we've all missed a majority of the episode. Naturally, I upload this type of video at least a day or two after the episode airs, so be sure to hit that subscribe and bell button to stay notified for when they do come out. And of course, if you've noticed something that I failed to mention in this video, then please leave a comment below because even on my third viewing, there is always something I managed to miss or didn't catch. But let's get to it. Now the first thing to note is that the opening credits have changed again. And just like in the previous episodes, the tiles flipping over signify the army of the dead and they have stopped in front of Winterfell. With all the devastation and destruction that happened during the battle, I'm sure the opening credits for next episode will update once again. The episode also opens up with our characters preparing for battle. As Theon is walking over to the Godswood to protect Bran, we can see that Alice Karstark is there with him. Some people have said that they saw her in the episode 4 preview, so it's possible she could have survived, but we will just have to see. When Melisandre appears before the battle, she lights up the Dothraki weapons after reciting some words. However, if you notice, Beric rarely needs to do this, which indicates that he's used the flaming sword trick so much that he doesn't need to recite the spell. It's just by memory, which is something the actor for Beric has confirmed. Melisandre needing to do this could mean that she's still fairly new at using these powers. In Season 3, we see a small conversation between her and Thoros, and how she's surprised that he's brought Beric back so many times, and in Season 6, we also see that she's hesitant on resurrecting Jon Snow, since she's never never tried anything like that before. This could explain her sudden death at the end of the episode, as she had exhausted all the magic that she's reserved to keep her young on this final battle, to light all those weapons and to ignite the fortifications. Before the battle, when Arya tells Sansa to head down to the crypts, she gives Sansa a dagger and the same advice Jon gave to her when she received Needle to stick him with the pointy end. As the Dothraki charge forward, we also see Jorah charging in as well, a slight callback to when Jorah was one of the first to charge in during the Siege of Pike in the Greyjoy Rebellion. Fans were also happy to see Ghost charging alongside him, mainly because Ghost has been sidelined for most of any major battles that Jon is involved in, most notably the Battle of Bastards. And yes, he did survive. He was in the episode preview, which I missed when I did my preview breakdown, but apparently he did survive. When the Dothraki do charge in, one of the first things we do see is a white giant. We later see that same white giant breaking into Winterfell, and it eventually dies after being stabbed in the left eye. This is a callback to the Battle of the Bastards when Winwin breaks through into Winterfell, and is eventually killed by an arrow to his right eye. Funny enough, this isn't the first time we've seen the Mormonts, in some way, make their mark in the Winterfell courtyard. It's small, but how can we forget that one time Jon went one-on-one -on -one with Ramsay and used the closest thing he could find against Ramsay's arrows, which happened to be a Mormont shield? And on the topic of that family, this is Jorah's final episode, as well as Lyanna, and like all of the Mormont deaths, they didn't back down and they made their final stand, which is a reminder of their family words. All noble families of Westeros have like a motto, and the Mormont's words are, here we stand. Lyanna stood her ground and defeated the giant, and Jorah stood his ground to protect his queen, ironically with the family sword of House Tarly, the same family that Danny destroyed last season. House Mormont is now the third house in the north that is confirmed to be extinct, right behind House Bolton and House Umber. Originally, the fighting style of the White Walkers were much different. Because they terrorized the wildlings for so long, you can tell that they were much more confident by going out and fighting as frontline shock troops originally. However, after the Battle of Hardhome, they realized that they were now dealing with people that could defeat them. This episode showed us that they are not mindless creatures, but sentient enough to form battle strategy and tactics. It's the reason that they now wear battle armor, because if you remember, Sam used a dragonglass dagger to kill one of them back in Season 3. So in preparation for the Battle of Winterfell, the White Walkers served as generals and stayed behind while launching a whirlwind to weaken the dragon's assault. When the Night King falls off Viseron, he is attacked by Danny with dragonfire but survive. This could indicate that because he is made of magic, that magical attacks do not work on him. And yes, dragons are considered magical creatures, or at least creatures with a strong connection to magic. However, the Night King is later killed by Arya with Littlefinger's Valyrian Steel Dagger. Before this, Arya runs into Melisandre inside Winterfell, who tells her the eyes she'll take forever. Brown, blue, and green. The brown eyes she's taken could mean Walder Frey. The blue meant the Night King, of course. And could green be Cersei Lannister? But before Arya runs off, Melisandre reminds her of what Cyril Pharrell used to tell her. What do we say to the god of death? Not today. She's also used this trick before with Jon Snow back in season 5. You know nothing, Jon Snow. 
And lastly, Arya uses the same trick against the Night King that she used against Brienne last season during their sparring match and stabs him in the chest, the same place where the dragon glass is located that was used to make the Night King. And before we wrap the video up, I do want to give a big thank you to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Building a website can be a major headache, but these guys make it as painless as possible. It really is a fantastic and easy to use service that allows you to build your own website the way you want it with no hassle. There's nothing to patch or install or anything else like that ever, and their award-winning customer service teams are standing by to help you create the perfect website for all your needs. They make it so easy to use and flawless that you don't have to be as clever as Tyrion Lannister himself to use it. So head on over to squarespace.com to get a free trial, see if you like it, and if you do, use code REDTEAMREVIEW for 10% off when you're ready to get going. Link below in the description. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm sure I missed a couple of things, so let me know if there was something you noticed that I didn't. As always, leave your thoughts down below, leave a like if you enjoyed, and be sure to subscribe and hit that bell button to stay notified, or follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with all future videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.